When it comes to full-size pickup trucks, General Motors has always been number two in the sales race, right behind, of course, the best-selling Ford F-150. Now, back in 2019, when GM gave us an all-new version of the Silverado and the Sierra, they essentially gave us one of the most capable and best-looking trucks that money can buy, while also delivering a plethora of different engine options to entice several truck buyers into dealers' showrooms. Now, back in 2022, they gave the Sierra and Silverado a pretty comprehensive refresh something that included an all new interior, a feature that was lacking from the 2019 to 2021 model. And for 2023, as you can see, the Sierra pretty much stays the same, although GMC is introducing an even more off-road capable version known as the AT4X with upgrades courtesy of AEV. Now, as you can see this week, GMC has loaned me this rather early production spec version of the 2023 Sierra AT4X. It essentially takes all of the goodies that we like from the Silverado ZR2, including the Trick Multimatic suspension upgrades. However, because this is a GMC, it gives us more premium interior finishes and a more upscale touch, especially if you guys are looking for a truck that has a luxury feel on the interior. So as you can see this week, we are driving this Sierra AT4X and the big question I went answered. If you guys are looking for a more off-road capable truck, but you demand something with a more luxury oriented interior, how does the 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling of the Sierra AT4X, I wanna pop the hood and remind you guys what's powering this thing. Now, GMC offers a choice of like four different engines and other trims of the Sierra. However, for the AT4X, they keep it pretty simple. You can only get it with the big block 6.2 liter V8. Now this engine is probably one of the last small block American pushrod V8s that you're gonna find, especially before GM decides to go with downsizing like everyone else is going with. This 6.2 liter V8 is naturally aspirated, it has direct injection, and it has variable cylinder management. It still makes the same 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are achieved on regular fuel, which is good because this thing is pretty thirsty. The AT4X package drops the fuel economy to 14 in the city, 17 on the highway. That's like a drop of like two to three MPG compared to other trims that also have this V8. Uh, it all comes standard, of course, with their four wheel drive system uh, with a low range transfer case. And it also has locking front and rear differentials. It's one of the only vehicles in the segment that offers a true locking front and rear diff. That's gonna help you, of course, uh, for those of you who like to go into really a deep off-road conditions. Now, uh, GM doesn't quote a zero to 60 time, but we've tested this engine before. We'll do it again and see what we can get uh, during our week's worth of testing with this vehicle. It has a top speed of around 98 miles an hour, which doesn't really matter much to most truck people. What is gonna matter is the towing. This model here will tow a maximum of 8,900 pounds. It'll carry a maximum of about 1,300 pounds in the bed. And as it sits, this truck is pretty heavy. It weighs in at just over 5,500 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, when this truck first debuted back in 2018, I proclaimed it to be one of the best looking trucks that you're gonna find in the half ton segment. Uh, and GMC gave it a pretty extensive overhaul in terms of the styling uh, back in 2022. And I have to say, it's still a really good looking truck, especially the AT4 X trim painted in this volcanic red ash for an extra $500. As you can see, uh, the big GMC grill is front and center here with the GMC logo, which is uh, outlined in red. You have an AT4X badge over here. And unlike the Denali, if you guys don't like chrome, what the AT4 trims essentially do is they black out all the chrome and black out all the accents, which is nice. But again, if you want the chrome, GMC will still happily sell you a Denali trim that'll give you that. You can see all of them come standard with full LED headlights with kind of like a C-shaped LED turn signal and LED daytime running light. You have LED low and high beams, LED fog lights down here. And then the AT4s all have the red tow hooks, of course, when you guys plan to get this uh, off-roading. If you get it stuck, those recovery tow hooks are gonna be useful. Uh, this model here is a very early production spec 2023 AT4X. Uh, later in the calendar year, all of them will have the upgrades for the, from the A, from AEV, which is, stands for American Expedition Vehicles. It'll essentially include a completely steel front bumper, which is winch capable, 
that'll improve the approach and departure angles. This model here, as you can see, has the standard bumpers that you get from the regular AT4. But as you can see, moving around the side profile of the vehicle, uh, the AT4Xs are only available in crew cab with the short bed. So you have a five foot eight long bed. Its overall length is around 233 inches long. It has a 147 inch long wheelbase. You can get a longer uh, eight foot bed if you'd like, but you're gonna have to downgrade to a different uh, trim level. You can see the AT4 X's come standard with a suspension lift, a two inch suspension lift, and you also get the Multimatic spool uh, dampers or DSSV dampers from the Silverado ZR2. It essentially includes three fluid fueled reservoirs that improve the ride quality and of course improve the off-road capability. The AT4X has a black finished 18 inch wheel. You can also get an AEV specific 18 inch wheel. And then of course, these are Goodyear uh, Wrangler Duratrek mud terrain tires. These are a 33 inch tall tire. You can see it's a 275 65 R18. Uh, and you can see over here, uh, you have these non-painted wheel arches. Uh, and in total, this vehicle has just under 11 inches of ground clearance. Now, if you guys go for the AT4X model or the AEV upgrades, you actually increase the ground clearance to around 11.1 inches or 11.2. So kind of keep that in mind. That is still not as good, of course, as what you're going to get from like the Raptor, but it's still going to give you a ton of uh, capability as well. Now you can see with the V with the V8, you have a 6.2 liter V8 badge here. If you go for a regular AT4, you can get this with the three liter Duramax diesel, a, a turbo inline six. You can see there's also black painted side mirrors with integrated turn signals. These are also power folding. And then you can see a lot of the chrome is blacked out along the window trim, which is nice. There's also a standard power sunroof. Unfortunately, GMC still doesn't offer a uh, panoramic glass roof like you can get in so many other competitors, including the new Toyota Tundra. My tester has these dealer installed off-road rock rails, which technically aren't running boards. You'll use them as that, but they are designed to protect the side of the vehicle, but uh, instead of actually providing an actual step to get into the truck. And then you can see here, my tester also has the sliding rear view or rear window. Uh, if you want a completely sliding a glass rear window, you'll have to go to look at the Toyota Tundra. It's the only vehicle in the segment that has that. Now looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see this bed is around five foot eight uh, inches long and you can see the rear of the truck is pretty much the same. This is where GMC kind of kept the look similar to the pre refresh models. You have full LED taillights with LED turn signals. You have this really nice corner step that helps short people like myself get into the bed. And then you can see my tester uh, already comes with the tow trailer package. Uh, it also has some badging there, AT4X. You can also black out the badging, I believe. And then my tester also has the multi-pro tailgate, which of course allows you to open it up in six different ways, six different configurations. And then my tester also has the spray and bed liner. You can also get this with their Carbon Pro, which is a carbon fiber reinforced bed liner or, or bed, uh, which again is going to improve the durability and it negates the need, of course, for a spray and bed liner. There's also a nice little step over here. And then there's also speakers in the bed. If you fold this down, you can see there's a kicker two speaker audio audio system, or it may actually be more than that. You can also get bed lights in here if you'd like, but you can see as well, the cool thing about this bed is you can kind of fold this down and kind of create a little table or create a little makeshift bed extender here for those of you who want to carry a few longer items uh, in the bed. So because GMC wants you to know their vehicles as premium trucks, let's go ahead and talk about the interior of this particular AT4X. Before we do that, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the same corporate key that you've seen on many other GM products. It says GMC on the back. Obviously you have remote start. You can also open up the tailgate, lock and unlock and panic. The remote itself, the fob feels nice. It's a good size and it feels like it's generally well made. Now, as I approach the truck, you, you guys heard it locks the truck automatically as I walk away. It has a walk away auto lock feature. You also can program it to to fold the mirrors. There's no sensor on the back of the handle. You have to touch the door handle button there and that's what will unlock the door for you. Now, if you guys want an AT4X, you better like a dark color interior because this is the only color combination it comes with. It's called uh, ash or volcanic ash. Uh, which is again, a really nice looking kind of dark interior with the contrasting piping and stitching. It's got red accent stitching. These seats are heated and ventilated and they're also massaging, which is nice. The seats adjust in like, I think 14 different ways. Uh, that button there turns the massage on. You can also adjust the bolstering here uh, and the bolstering for the bottom cushion. And then you can see here, the door panel has some really nice materials. I love kind of like the textured leather that you get here on the door panels with some genuine ash wood grain trim here. This wood definitely looks really great with the black uh, interior accents. You have an AT4X badge there along with some contrasting stitching over here. Down here, there's all hard touch plastic materials, hard touch over here as well, but you can see there's a good amount of storage. You have a 12 speaker Bose stereo, 
in this truck, which sounds good, although it's not quite as good as what I've heard in, for example, like the Ram 1500, which has like a Harman Kardon, like almost 20 speaker sound system. Now, uh, my tester here has these rock rails uh, or off-road rails, but they're not really running boards. So getting in this truck, if you're shorter because of the nearly 11 inches of ground clearance is kind of a challenge. Thankfully, there's a nice grab handle here, which is leather wrapped. So if you want to get in, you can't really step on this. You kind of just have to hold this and hoist yourself in um, so I recommend for those of you who are shorter, you should probably look into getting the actual running boards, but it will decrease your off-road capability. But getting in and shutting the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, which leads to the impression of quality. And let me tell you guys, when I first saw this interior last year, I was blown away. Still in 2023, it's still a very nice interior that really looks and feels a lot more luxurious than of course the pre prior uh, pre-refresh models. Now starting the vehicle up, you can see there's the start stop button right here, which isn't blocked by the steering wheel, which is nice. You hear the typical GM bongs when you turn the vehicle on. And then of course, most of the models will come standard with the 12.3 inch fully digital cluster here. I think only the base SR Pro version doesn't have a digital display. And then most of the higher trims will also come with their new 13.4 inch uh, Google Android based operating system. So this is their latest infotainment setup, which includes, as you guys see, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It includes also over the air updates and it also has voice commands where you can uh, ask Google to do things for you. Uh, which works fairly well. In terms of the rest of the interior accents, you can see that contrasting piping and stitching carries over on the dash. It's a slightly different dash design uh, versus the Silverado. You can see this is genuine leather covering the dash. There's more of that wood and aluminum trim. There's some piano black plastic trim. The overall design definitely looks very nice. The steering wheel, you can see, aside from the GMC logo, looks pretty identical to a Silverado. What I don't like about this steering wheel is how thin the rim is. I prefer a thicker rim for the steering wheel, especially on this particular trim of the truck, it just feels a little wimpy when you're holding the steering wheel. There's paddles on the wheel uh, to control the 10-speed the automatic transmission. You have uh, buttons here for your heated seats or your heated steering wheel, your adaptive cruise control. Uh, this also can control what that screen looks like. You can see you can adjust a couple of things here and, and show your different trip computer, audio information, GPS. You can also change the way the gauges look by going to display layout. I have it on the progressive setting. There's also a classic, which gives you a traditional circular two dial look. There's also a digital, which kind of makes it appear again, more digital. Uh, and there's also a clean layout, which kind of gets rid of all of the extra clutter if you guys prefer just something really simple. I really like the progressive look. Uh, GMC also gives you some unique colors compared to the Silverado that I was in uh, last week. So again, all of this looks fairly nice and this uh, definitely feels a lot more modern versus the prior uh, generation, the pre-refresh truck. You can see my tester also has a heads up display, which you can also customize via these buttons over here. You can also adjust uh, the height of it and adjust the brightness. Your four wheel drive controller is over here where there's an automatic mode, a two high, two or four high and a four low. And you can also change the drive mode. There's three different drive modes, normal, off-road and terrain. There's no sport mode. Off-road and terrain is really good if you guys are planning to off-road this truck. It also includes a one pedal drive feature, which will give you a lot of engine braking so you don't have to hit your or hit the brakes uh, when you're uh, off-roading quite as much. Now you can see the seats offer a two-person memory. Uh, these are really nice soft touch leather materials. Like I mentioned earlier, the windows, uh, one touch up down for the front. The rears are just one touch down, but not one touch up. Uh, headlight controls are over here. Uh, the steering wheel itself is a power tilt and telescoping, which is nice. Um, the horn, sounds good. It doesn't sound puny. It sounds appropriate given the size of this truck. Uh, and then over here, looking at the rest of this center or the rest of the dash, you can see uh, I like how there's genuine real leather covering the lower portion of the dash. This screen here works really well. You can see there's the embedded GPS where it can take up the entire screen if you'd prefer. Uh, and it's also basically uh, Google Maps, which is really nice. Uh, this system here, you can see works really well. It also gives you a ton of annoying prompts for privacy and such whatnot. But you can see uh, the screen itself, very quick and snappy resolution. It also looks exactly like what you'd find on your phone. But anytime you go to the CarPlay, of course, you have the two screen design. So you can't get expand to give you full screen Apple CarPlay, which is fine. This screen is definitely big enough, but I like how you can, again, kind of put different uh, um, information over here, including putting your trailer view, your audio information, and of course the uh, GPS as well. So that's all fairly nice. There's the home screen, as you can see, which you can allows you to kind of customize things. This car does have a 4G hotspot or 5G hotspot built in, I believe, uh, which again is nice if you guys want to do some work uh, in the truck. 
And then of course, there's also a special trailering view, uh, which allows you to access different uh, views and uh, makes hooking up a trailer a lot easier. If you guys plan to do that more often, you can see down here, there's your dual zone climate control uh, function, which again, is fairly easy to use. I like how there's actual screens in the dials. I like how there's actually dials. You have heated and cooled seats, which are actual buttons, which is nice. If I push this little, or if I touch this little dis, uh, control here on the seat, you can see that brings up the massaging seat controls, which you can see there's several different types of massage uh, you, where you can basically do a back boulder or lower massage. There's uh, different different intensities as well. So that all works fairly nicely. Let me turn that fan control down. You can see down here you have different controls for your lane keep assist, your uh, parking sensors, uh, the auto start stop defeat button. Then you can also open up the tailgate. There's your buttons to lock and unlock the front and rear differentials along with downhill assist control. This shifter here controls the 10 speed automatic transmission. You push this little trigger here, push it forward to go into reverse. You can see there's your backup camera. Uh, this vehicle also offers several different trailering views along with side views, curb views, and a, a full 360 view, of course, if you guys prefer, which again, that resolution doesn't look great, but most of you are just gonna be using the backup camera there. And that definitely is a huge improvement over prior versions of their uh, uh, backup camera systems. You can see down here, there's a good amount of storage. Your trailer brake controller is integrated here and it's a it's mounted very conveniently right by the shifter. Uh, my tester is missing a wireless phone charging pad. They give you like a $70 credit because it's missing that and it's probably because of the chip shortage, um, which is kind of annoying considering that's the place where your wireless phone charger would go. Uh, you have a nice padded center console here and then you can see, open this up, you have an actual power outlet. There's a USB-A and a USB-C dongle. Uh, there and then you also have even deeper storage in there along with a little led light uh, this isn't quite as big as what i've seen from the f-150 uh, but it's still a pretty uh, good amount of storage which is nice the seats are also very comfortable and supportive i love the full grain premium leather that you get with the at4x trim along with the massaging function it works great you have two glove two glove boxes you can see there's another glove box here at the top along with a lower glove box which is a bin style so plenty of storage in this truck and then as you guys can see here you have a digital camera rear view mirror which is definitely nice especially if you plan to have uh, a lot of stuff in the back that's kind of blocking your view and then with the at4x trim you get uh, alcantara and real leather stitching on the roof panel which is definitely nice you have also a standard sunroof with a standard shade, this also opens up and tilts, but again, no panel roof, which is kind of a huge miss for me uh, in terms of uh, the interior. But other than that, it has all the tech that you expect. It has a really comfortable feel. It has it offers a ton of space. And really, I just wish that GMC would offer a panoramic roof, but overall, this is still one of the nicest interiors you're gonna find in the segment. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of this truck because it only comes as a crew cab which means you have one of the largest back seats that you're gonna find in the segment. There's 43.5 inches of legroom back here, which is pretty much on par with every other truck in the segment. It's maybe like an inch or two more, maybe versus something like the F-150. You can see materials are carried over to the back seat on the upper door panel with the leather, the aluminum, the aluminum accents, metal accents for the speakers, and all of the nice leather that you find on the armrest pad. These seats, as you can see, offer pretty cool uh, handy hidden storage behind the actual seat back. It's also on the other side. You can also fold these headrests down so it doesn't block your view. You can also lift up this where you can access a little bit of under seat storage over there. Although it's not lockable, it is covered uh, at least, which is nice. You can just push that down to make it go down. Uh, there's also a nice grab handle here, which is stitched in leather to help short people like myself get into the actual back seat. So, but once I get back here, you can see there's just a ton of leg room back here. Uh, and there's also a completely flat floor. The, the one beautiful thing about these trucks is being over 80 inches wide, you can easily fit three people across, uh, which is nice. You have rear seat air vents back here along with rear seat power outlets. You have three level heated seats back here, cup holders, you have two storage cubbies. Uh, one thing that this truck doesn't offer, however, are manual retractable shades. You can get that in some competitors. And then when you don't have that panel roof, you do have a ton of headroom here, which is nice. You can also open this window if you'd like via power uh, switch up on the roof there. But overall, you can see uh, if you guys plan to use this as a family vehicle, just like all the other trucks in the segment, the Sierra certainly offers a ton of space here to stretch out. So here we are back to spend a little more time in the 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X. Now, the last time I drove the AT4X, I was at the media drive for this vehicle about nine months ago or so. Uh, and it was a 2022 model. It's when it got some pretty extensive updates. For 2023, uh, the vehicle stays roughly the same, although I am driving a very early 2023 model and it's missing the AEV upgrades. Um, 
which basically include a front bumper, a steel front bumper that in, that's winch capable, different wheels and tires, AEV badging. It's like a $7,000 upcharge if you guys wait for uh, that truck. It'll be out in late 2023. Now, if you go for the AT4X, it only comes with the 6.2 liter push rod, naturally aspirated V8. Uh, with variable displays or with the variable cylinder management and direct injection. Uh, let's go ahead and test out the zero to 60, which is gonna be interesting because I just had the uh, Trail Boss with the diesel engine, which got a power upgrade. So let's see, see if the V8 is quicker. Oops, I'll try again. Ooh, <laughs> this thing really wants to leap off the line. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, zero to 60 in 5.97 seconds, which is pretty quick. Um, this is actually about a half a second faster versus the diesel. Remember the turbo diesel inline six got a upgrade in power for 2023. And I test drove that in the Silver Auto Trail Boss, which that did it in about 6.5 seconds. I will say that the V8, while it does sound better, you have to rev this engine significantly more to get the power versus the diesel has all that delicious 500 foot pounds of torque, basically right off of idle. The V8 requires you to really push it, but when you do push it, it sounds good, and you can also get it with a cat-back performance exhaust system, which will make the noise even better. Uh, so that's something that I would personally look into, but let's go ahead and try it one more time here, see what we can get on this stretch. We're not gonna break torque, we're just gonna floor it this time. Ooh, this thing really leaps off the line. <laughs> Listen to that, and the shifts from the 10-speed are smooth. 6.19 seconds there, so this is with it more going slightly uphill, which is not bad. So 5.9 is a very good time, and it keeps a pace with all of the other competitors' top engines. Remember, this is the big boy 6.2. It's really one of the last options out there if you want a traditional V8. A lot of the other manufacturers are going to uh, forced induction and downsizing. Uh, GM is one of the last that offers a big block 6.2. Ford offers, of course, their five liter V8, but most of them are sold with the twin turbo EcoBoost or the PowerBoost hybrid system. And then Ram should be dropping their 5.7 soon for that Hurricane uh, twin turbo inline six. So kind of keep that in mind. If you guys want a traditional V8, GM is one of the last vehicles that is going to do that. And I'm not entirely sure how long they're gonna keep this around. Now, spending a little more time with the AT4X, uh, this vehicle does come standard with the Multimatic uh, DSSV dampers. This is basically taken, it's tech taken directly from the Silverado ZR2, and it's designed to give you even better road control or ride comfort when you're out on the road because it has three separate reservoirs that will send fluid to the reservoir that's gonna give you the best ride quality. And of course, it's gonna assist you when you're off-roading. And this truck also comes with a two inch lift that's similar to the regular AT4. So we have in total about 10.8 inches of ground clearance. You do have a really big commanding view of the road in this vehicle. And unlike the Trail Boss Silverado, which I just had, that vehicle uh, had a hood that kind of really just got in the way of my view. Uh, the AT4X isn't quite as pronounced, the hood, the hood bulge, but it's definitely not as good as some other trucks like the F-150 or the Ram or the Tundra have slightly better visibility. Put my foot down here again. You can feel the revs need to build up the engine revs all the way up to like 5,800 RPM, but when you do that, you're greeted with a nice sound and very linear pull. So that's something that uh, people I'm assuming will really appreciate if you guys prefer a traditional driving and feeling truck. Uh, this car does, or this truck does come with 33, 33 inch tall Goodyear mud terrain tires, and they definitely make a little bit of noise when you get the speed up. Let's go ahead and try it again here really quick to see what we get. <laughs> I love how it spins the front tires when you do that. All right, 5.86 seconds there. So very good performance. It keeps up, of course, with the Tundra, with its iForce Max powertrain, with the F-150 uh, EcoBoost. I haven't had a chance to retest a PowerBoost F-150, the hybrid system, but that is also another very quick truck. I would probably say that the Ram is the slowest with its 5.7 liter e-torque V8. Although again, I haven't had a chance to retest that. I will be getting my hands on a Ram 1500 to retest in the next a couple of weeks. But overall, this is a very comfortable truck. I mean, GM prides themselves, or GMC prides themselves on being the premium choice for off-road trucks. And I like the ride quality with these uh, DSSV dampers. The ride quality is a little bit more comfortable versus the Silverado Trail Boss. 
the seats are also really comfortable. I love the plush leather that you get with this Obsidian Rush interior. The massaging seats also work really well. This is not no cheap massage. This is actually offering several different modes and intensities, and it really gives you a nice little back massage while you're sitting here in comfort. The heated and cooled seats also work really well. The heated steering wheel also keeps your hands nice and toasty. The uh, visibility I mentioned earlier isn't as good as some other competing vehicles, but thankfully it doesn't have as annoying of a hood bulge as like the Silverado Trail Boss. And in terms of driver assistance, this truck does come with adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist. However, if you want Super Cruise, which is their hands-free driver assistance tech on the highway, uh, it is not available on the AT4 trims. You have to go to a Denali or a Denali Ultimate trim where it's ultimately a $2,000 upcharge if you want the Super Cruise, which I've tested it. It works really well. It's one of the best in the system, best hands-free driving tech in the industry. But overall, in terms of other drive modes, this car, this truck only has uh, a normal, an off-road and a terrain mode. The terrain and off-road mode kind of gives you almost like a one-pedal drive effect when you have the vehicle in low range. It'll give you tons of engine braking to slow the, the truck down where you don't have to use the brake pedal. There is no sport mode in this truck because it's an AT4. I think GM offers that, or GMC offers that in the Denali or other trims of the truck. But overall, I like the Sierra. The Sierra still represents one of my favorites in terms of exterior design. The interior changes they got this year really made it a lot more luxurious and brought the tech finally up to uh, par or above par compared to some competitors. Uh, and in terms of fuel economy, this is where the truck definitely lags. If you guys want better efficiency, go with the diesel because I just spent a week with the diesel before that, before this, and I got uh, a little over 20 MPG in combined driving. This truck has only been averaging around 13 and a half, which is awful. So seven MPG improvement in the diesel and you get almost 600 miles of range. I would highly recommend going with the diesel option simply because it's gonna give you that best MPG. This truck, however, will do roughly around 350 miles on a full tank. Remember, it's a thirsty V8. It can run on regular gas, but it kind of shows you that uh, GM is probably going to end up replacing the 6.2 because it's just not the best for fuel efficiency. But overall, the AT4X is a comfortable premium off-road truck that finally has an interior that's worthy of its price tag and its exterior design only got better for the 2022 model year and it kind of carries over for 2023. I haven't seen the AEV edition yet, but I'm hoping I'll be able to see one in person soon. I like the uh, even more rugged looks that uh, AEV has done to the truck. But overall, if you want an off-road truck and you don't necessarily need the extra performance that you get from like a Raptor, for example, uh, the Sierra AT4X is certainly worth a look. So after spending a full week with the 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X, I have to say, this is still one of my favorite trucks in terms of the exterior design. It's just a beautiful looking truck, especially in this volcanic red metallic uh, paint color with the black all-terrain, the black wheels and all-terrain tires. The interior also finally is worthy of GMC's so-called premium badge. They wanna be known as premium off-road trucks or premium trucks. And with those really attractive seats, which are comfortable and massaging the actual wood grain trim that you get in the interior, uh, the much improved 13.4 inch infotainment system, which is Google Android based with wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. It definitely has an interior that feels like it could almost belong in a Cadillac. And it's a much uh, nicer interior versus the Silverado Trail Boss that I tested literally last week. Is it nicer versus vehicles like the new Toyota Tundra, the TRD Pro, which also has a nice infotainment system. Ford, of course, is also still killing it with the F-150. And then there's, of course, Ram, which I haven't had a chance to test an updated version as of this filming. I will be getting my hands on one very soon in the next couple of weeks. The 6.2 liter V8 also delivers solid performance. 0 to 60 in just under six seconds is going to be great for most people. Unfortunately, the fuel economy of the AT4 isn't great. Although if you guys are buying a more off-road capable truck, you're gonna expect to get less fuel economy. But for those of you who want better fuel efficiency, the Toyota Tundra and of course the F-150 with their hybrid systems is gonna do better, but you could also get the diesel. So my recommendation is look at the diesel version of this. Although if you want the AT4X, it doesn't offer the Duramax diesel. So that's something that I wish that GMC would address. As you guys know from my Silverado review, the diesel got some upgrades in terms of power and it's my preference if you guys are trying to decide between the diesel or the 6.2. But overall, this is still a very capable, very nice truck to own and live with for a week. And as long as you can get past the fuel economy that isn't quite as good, uh, the visibility that's not quite as good, the ride quality is better with these Multimatic dampers. It certainly is still one of my top, top recommendations out there. Unfortunately, truck prices have definitely gotten pretty crazy in this 
Sierra is definitely one of the most expensive trucks that you can buy. In general, the Sierra starts around $10,000 more versus competing base trucks from Chevy and from Ford and from Ram. Sierra has basically started just under $45,000. Add $3,400 if you guys want four-wheel drive. Most of you are probably going to step it up to the SLE trim, which starts at around $55,000. And if you want an AT4, that's going to cost you at least $68,000 for a base AT4. The AT4X is pretty much loaded uh, and you can essentially uh, expect to spend around $80,000 for this truck. This model here is an early 2023, so it started at 77.5, but the later 2023s don't even offer you the ability to get it without the non -A or without the AEV bumpers and upgrades. Uh, so as tested, this truck here is around 81 grand, but if you're gonna order one now from a dealership, uh, you're probably gonna expect to spend around 85 grand. You could essentially top out a GMC Sierra at around 90 grand for either the Sierra Denali Ultimate or a top AT4, uh, AT4X with the AEV package, which is just crazy. That used to be pricing for a three quarter ton truck, but now of course with all these trucks, half tons, getting all these tech, getting all this extra capability, it's kind of been pushing the pricing up to crazy levels, but kind of keep that in mind, every other competitor is kind of at that uh, level as well. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X. If you're also looking to see the latest vehicles I'm testing. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.